Hi, I'm Kim Schmidt, and I've been working with Amazon Web Services for quite some time now. What I like to do is visit the AWS Marketplace, the link you see at the top of the page, periodically to find new tools that help me do my job easier or better. The product I'm going to talk about today is called Botmetric. Botmetric gives you cloud freedom in many different ways. Some of the benefits of using Botmetric include the following. It helps you manage your AWS cloud spend easily and efficiently. It has automatic detection of AWS best practice violations that are happening with your accounts and gives you the ability to fix them either manually or when safe with one click. It helps you automate routine DevOps tasks via cron jobs, integral jobs, or customized cron expressions in a quick and agile manner. It generates multiple reports that are very valuable. It increases all of AWS security types, such as network, access, permissions, authentication, infrastructure, and data security. And then I have to talk about the amazing Botmetric support team. You'll see in the interface of Botmetric, there's a little chat icon at the bottom right. And at any time, you can just type in a question and 90% of the time, there's someone there to answer you immediately. If there isn't in the off chance, you will get a response in my experience in less than an hour, both via the chat window and via email. The support team will spend as much time as possible to answer your questions to your satisfaction or to get issues resolved so that you remain productive during that particular day. Another thing that makes their support team above and beyond any companies I've ever encountered is the fact that when my company sees a feature that they would like implemented in their product. They will have it implemented in their product within weeks. And I can show you an example of that when I go through one of the demos. In this overview video, I'm going to go over Botmetrics primary components, which consist of cost analytics, cloud insights, and cloud automation. And lastly, in this overview video, I'll go over the Botmetric user interface because it consists more of the three primary components and their associated pages, but it also includes a dashboard, a reserved instance planner view, cloud reports, and the control panel. The first primary component I'm going to talk about is cost analytics. Within the various views that you see here on this slide within cost analytics, you will get a granular view of your spend patterns. You'll be able to set budget alerts. You'll see your daily report summaries. You'll see your resource changes. You'll see optimized reserved instance planning suggestions, and you have the ability to identify cost leakages. What you're looking at now is the cost dashboard within cost analytics. From here, you can create budget alerts. You can see an overview of your cost spends compared to the same day last month. You can see your spend by AWS linked accounts and click on more details for more details. You have a view of spend by AWS services the percentage of your costs that you're spending on those services and your spend to date, and a button to click for more details. Here you see the ECU vCPU-based cost analysis where you can set different parameters here and time intervals. You can download an image of the chart that's rendered. ECU stands for EC2 Compute Units, and that was the preferred way to allow developers to compare predictable amounts of CPU capacities between the different instance types. However, vCPU is the more modern and suggested way because it allows you to compare EC2 instance sizes as a CPU, which includes the clock speed, the number of CPUs, the RAM, the storage, and more. This is the Cost Explorer view within Cost Analytics. I spend a lot of time in here generating reports. You can see that you have nice charts that are rendered in different formats that you can download images of or export as CSV. You can set different time units 
and time ranges here, and you can filter by different things such as linked accounts, cloud services and which cloud services, availability zones, tags, purchase options, API operation, etc. You also have the ability to exclude credits here. The cost optimizer view under cost analytics gives you a list of cost saving opportunities. Now, this might not add up to much potential savings, but I've seen companies where these numbers are in the thousands, and you can view the details of each. The cost projection view under cost analytics is a new service, and they're going to add more filters on this right side. Now, I really like this because I requested it. I asked Botmetric to create charts not only on cost to date, but on predicted cost by month by linked accounts and cloud services. The cost allocation view under cost analytics categorizes and tracks your costs aggregated by tags, which is an Amazon Web Services best practice. So let's just say the environment and we'll select the month of February 2016 and analyze. It gives you your unallocated costs that weren't tagged and your allocated costs. If I click on unallocated costs, I can see a list of all of the unallocated costs. If I click on one of these, I can then click on this little checkbox and allocate each one of these unallocated resources. The next major component I'm going to talk about in Botmetric is Cloud Insights. If you look at the cartoon above, somebody is saying, what if we don't change at all and something magical just happens? Well, that doesn't work in any business, especially in the cloud. Costs can get out of control, security best practices can not be in place, and many other things. So what Cloud Insights does is it automatically scours your AWS accounts for AWS best practice violations with four different audits, costs, disaster recovery, performance, and security. The views that you have in Cloud Insights consist of the audit dashboard and cloud fix. Let's take a look at them. We are looking at the audit dashboard under Cloud Insights. You can see that you can do an audit on demand. However, Botmetric performs audits automatically every four hours. You can see there are cost audits, disaster recovery audits, performance audits, and security audits. And you can filter what you're looking at. If we take a look at cost audit, they're saying that these AMIs are older than 90 days. We recommend to deregister these AMIs to save cost. All of these are recommendations. The goal of this page here is to have nothing in here at all. So you either click to fix or you ignore. And if you ignore it because you're not sure what you want to do with them, you can later include the ignored items to address later. Another good example of a cost audit is unused DynamoDBs. It states that these DynamoDBs are unused and they've had no read or write requests in the last 14 days. They recommend that you shut them down to save costs. Low CPU utilization of EC2 instances recommend if they're not being used very much, you can downgrade the instance type to save costs. Under disaster recovery audits, they're telling you if you have no snapshots, for particular volumes. If you do not have EC2 instances distributed properly across availability zones, etc. In performance audit view, you can see problems such as increased database connections by whatever percent, and in this case it's 212% between the last and current week on particular RDS instances. It'll detect high CPU utilization of EC2 instances and recommend that you upgrade the instance type. Looking at security audits under security group, Botmetric is telling you that either that certain firewall rules are improper. They're either open to the public or they're open to a wide range of IP addresses. They are recommending that you keep these ports open only to trusted IPs or security groups to avoid any exposure to known security vulnerabilities. 
unused IAM access keys would be something you would want to know about because if someone was an employee and they aren't there anymore, but they still can log in with their IAM user access account, that's not a good thing and you want to know about it. In the Cloud Fix view, this allows you to look at everything that was in the audit dashboard in one window. So under unused IAM access keys, you could select them all and fix them in one click without having to go through each one on the previous view. The last main feature I'm going to cover is cloud automation. In cloud automation, Botmetric allows you to create jobs that perform routine DevOps cloud ops operations. You can create cron jobs, or if the Botmetric templates don't fit your criterion, you could create custom cron expressions, and you can also create interval jobs. Once you create those jobs, then you can manage them. Let me show you how. Here we are in Create Jobs under Cloud Automation. The first thing you do is you select your resource type, and then you select what type of job. I'm going to select a cron job, and then you select the job type. So you could do things like create an EC2 AMI based on instance tags. You can copy an AMI based on tags. You can copy AMIs across all accounts, deregister old AMIs, many, many things. But one of the most common things that people want to do or should be doing is to start and stop EC2 instances. So I'm going to click on that and then you enter your particular attributes and a schedule if needed. So having your EC2 instances running all day, all night, and all weekend is going to cost you a lot of money. You can save more than 60% of your EC2 costs if you shut down your instances, not terminate them, but shut them down during the evenings and on weekends, and then start them up again on weekdays. Once you've created jobs, you manage them through the Manage Job view of Cloud Automation. And this allows you to view, edit, and delete the created cloud jobs that you've created. Now we're in the Reserved Instance Planner where you can see you have three subviews: the EC2 Reserved Instance Planner, the RDS Reserved Instance Planner, and the Unused Reserved Instances. In the EC2 Reserved Instance Planner, it tells you the total amount of instances, unused and active, gives you a summary of what the on-demand cost would be with no upfront, partial upfront or all upfront for one year or three years with the same thing for your total reserved instance costs and the potential savings. It gives you the top recommendation by region and the top recommendations by instance type. And then at the bottom, it'll tell you all of the recommendations that Botmetric suggests. The RDS Reserved Instance Planner shows you pretty much the same thing as the EC2 Planner. The Unused Reserved Instances will show you which reserved instances aren't being used and they could give you recommendations such as modify this reserved instance into M3 Medium from US East 1D to US East 1B in a VPC because you could actually use that. Now let's take a quick look at the overall interface of Botmetric. This is Botmetric Dashboard. You get an overview of the top cloud insights and you can click here to get the detailed view. Your cloud fixes, again, to click here to see the details. You have your cost analytics dashboard of your cloud spends for all your AWS accounts with an estimated cost for the current month, the potential savings you would have if you implemented all of Botmetric suggestions for the month, and you could exclude credits, for example, if you have upfront paid reserved instances. This shows you how much to date you've spent. Now I'm creating this demo very early in the month, so it's kind of negligible, but as the month progresses, you'll see things change. And again, you can click a button to get more details. You have the current month spend by accounts. Again, it's the beginning of the month, so you don't see much here. And again, you can exclude credits and you can click here for more detail. 
You can also download an image of the chart and you get your reserved instance utilization that you can click here to get more detail. You can filter by accounts, by service, by availability zones, platforms, instances, and time intervals. And it tells you your reserved instance utilization and your on-demand utilization. Cloud report view is awesome. This is a daily inventory summary report. Here's a daily inventory detailed report. Both of those reports tell you every single thing that you have running on AWS across all all of your accounts. They're invaluable to keep track in a big company or even a small company that is just using a lot of resources on AWS and it gives you information on how to optimize everything. And I'll go into that in more detail in the video that's just on the cloud reports and the dashboard. This is the control panel where you configure access management and other things. So right here for cost analytics, you would manage your billing accounts. For cloud automation, you can create specific right access in order to heal the problems with the one click. And for cloud insights, Here's your audit preferences where you could set various parameters. There are three other sections missing for security reasons. I would like to point out at the top here, you could take a tour of the product. You could access the support portal or product updates. This is a valuable little icon because it shows you when things are done or if certain thresholds are exceeded and other important information. These are your settings for your user profile and this is the icon where if clicked you get access to the chat window to the awesome bot metric support team this is the end of the overview video on bot metric I know we went over things quickly and there was a lot of things to go over therefore I hope you follow the series some of the other topics I'll be covering include connecting bot metric to Amazon web services cost analytics in detail, cloud insights in detail, cloud automation in detail, the dashboard overview in more detail, and various report types, bot metric best practices, and security best practices. I hope you found this video to be of value. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me at the email address in the lower left corner. Thank you for watching.